All right, there are two different feeds on this. There is one feed that moves its cutting head in and out on the rotor, which is right here. There's a lock for it down here. Make sure it's unlocked anytime you need to move it. Um, this is a manual feed. Uh, in order to make it mechanical, there's a lever here with two speeds. It has a high, and a, it has fast and slow, and if you lift this red knob and pull it towards you, or towards the word fast, then it'll go fast, and for the slow speed, you lift it, put it away from you towards slow. Uh, and I'll show you what that looks like right now. So if you take a look at this handle, that's fast. And then that's slow. And what that's doing is that will bring the, the cutting head out mechanically. Um, and that's actually what's going to force this, the cutting tools along here and cut the metal off. The other one is we can move this in and out. There's a lock just like here. Make sure it's unlocked. There's also another auxiliary lock. This has speed control just like the other one, and it is either you can do it by hand um, or you can do mechanical feed. Now, anytime you're cutting metal, it should always be mechanical feed. Okay? You should never be hand feeding it when you're trying to put a, a finish on um, a brake rotor or drum. You should always use a mechanical. Uh, main power switch is right there. If you, need, if you are saying work, the only time you'd use this, the only time you'd use this mechanically is if you're machining brake drums. Okay? And if you were machining brake drums, you flip this lever and your speed control is right here. Fast and slow. This one's a little bit different. This has several different speeds between 2 and 20, whereas this one just has 2. All right, the first thing that we want to do is let's open up our cutting bits. Uh, and to do that, unscrew these. And sometimes you need to push the cutting bits in because brake shavings, the, the metal shavings get inside the bits sometimes. And then what we're going to try and do is we want to kind of get the rotor kind of centered in here. It doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, but we want it kind of centered in here. And at the same time, try and keep it back as far as possible. All right, once you get this set where you want it, lock it down, and then also put this feed lock in place. This helps you and keeps you from accidentally hitting this lever when you're machining the brake rotor. Because if you have these bits in place and you hit that, then it's going to cause the rotor to move and will actually make the bit dig right into the rotor and cut a very deep groove in the rotor, more than likely groove the rotor. And probably the cutting bit. Anytime you move the cutting bits in place, the machine should be turned on. You want to be very careful of a couple things. Those of you that have hoodies on, or if you have a lanyard that has a key on it, be very careful. This machine doesn't look like it's spinning really fast, does it? it it's not spinning uh, extremely fast, but it does deliver a lot of torque. And what that means is if you get one of those strings caught in here because you're working over this, it will draw you right into it. Okay, so please be careful. Make sure you don't have anything hanging down. Also, Anytime you're working in this general area, if this is on, keep your hands away from the top of the brake rotor. If I make contact with the top of the brake rotor, it's going to try and drag my hand right down into the bit, right down into the cutting bit. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to bring these bits in one at a time just till they make contact and touch. Um, you're going to need two of your senses. The first one is sight. Take a look at it and watch it go in.
So run your tool down close to the rotor. When you get close, slow down. It's going to be difficult to see when it, when it actually makes contact, so you're going to want to listen for it. don't want to run this bit into the hat of the rotor. I want to get it as close to the hat as possible and then still be able to cut pretty much all the material off the back side. Now right now I'm hitting a layer of rust. Okay, I've got pretty much as close as I can get it without hitting the hat of the rotor. Now, on here are numbers. When you turn this, if the numbers are going up, the bits are getting deeper. They're cutting more material off. What I'm going to do is I need to add a little bit more to this. I'm going to add two lines to it, and then I'm going to take a fast pass. I'm going to keep doing a fast pass until my rotor is, is machining material off of it all the way out. So while the machine's on, I'm going to add two, lock this down, add two lines, lock this down, and then go and then set it on fast speed. Lock. Add two and lock. Now if you go two and a half, don't worry about it. Not that big a deal. Don't back it up. If you back it up, you have to back everything off and then reset it. Make sure your lock is set. And then I'm gonna, my first pass, I'm gonna do fast. Lift up on the knob, pull it towards you, and then it's gonna start with your metal. Kind of see that gray, that dull gray that's coming up? That's metal. The, the, the dark black color, the shiny black has been removed. And that's the metal that's underneath it. So it's physically removing metal from this right now. And that's the shavings that are coming off. should be this dull gray color all the way around. If it's not, we need, would need to bring it back in, add two more, and do it again until this is gray, this dull gray all the way around. If it doesn't hit, it doesn't remove metal deep enough all the way around, what you'll see is a black spot. And that's the original surface still there. It hasn't removed the original surface.